Tigers, although they're having a forgettable start. They're at Chicago, 0-4, and, and soon to be 0-5. The numbers on your screen will explain why. 32 degrees is the coldest home game for the White Sox since they started recording temps in 1990. Detroit frigid at the stick, batting a buck nine this season with a buck 49 on base percentage. If soft grounders were money, Detroit would be rich. Mark Burley throws eight innings of yes, shutout baseball, retired 16 of his final 17 hitters. White Sox up three in the fifth when Frank Thomas straddles up to the bar and orders a jack. First shot of the season. Detroit falls 7-zip. Tigers 0-5 for the second straight season have scored just four runs this year and have just 16 hits for Alan Trammell. White Sox Indians, Jason Davis on the mound. The rookie, two outs, bags full. Joe Creedy, a comebacker. Jason Davis, Frank Thomas comes across to score because Davis couldn't get it. Two nothing White Sox. Next batter, bag still full. Armando Rijos looking for space, finds it. Maglio Adonis, Paul Canerco both would score. Chicago would score five in the first off of Davis. Next batter, Sandy Alomar Jr. A three hit effort for Alomar Jr. Two RBIs, Creedy would score. After one, it's five nothing. Bottom four, Mark Burley cruising one on one out. Casey Blake to Burley. The grab, the second to get Shane Spencer. Double play. Burley allows just a run. White Sox win. Tigers still hoping to find out what winning feels like this season. Taking on the White Sox, top second. D'Angelo Jimenez dialing long distance. Adam Brunero paid for the call. Jimenez three for five, three runs. His second home of the year. Sox up three zip. Bottom second. Esteban Loaiza facing Dimitri Young. Young grounds over to second, and Jimenez able to make the play barehanded. Bottom six. Loaiza facing Shane Halter. And look at him knock this one down. A little bobble, but he makes a throw. And a nice recovery. Bottom eight, Loaiza in complete control. Ramon Santiago, see ya. Sox 25 zip, Loaiza eight innings, two hits, three strikeouts. Detroit 0-9 now. Tigers going for two in a row. Yeah, Woo! yeah, you! But Bartolo Colon had it working. At Copa, as they call it. Bobby Higgins in the 2-2 count. Fouls it away in a defensive swing that we'll have to show again. Colon was bringing it. Next pitch. Higginson, look. He's gone. He knew it. Higginson's next at bat, fourth inning, not a pick to click. Another defensive swing. Yep. <laughs> Hang in there. Next pitch. Look. Nine strikeouts in seven innings. Cologne wins his first with the White Sox. Immediate steps taken by the White Sox for Wednesday's game against the Royals included checking ticket stubs more frequently and two extra people watching each foul line. Bottom four, Carlos Lee. Angel Barrow, a throw in the dirt. Frank Thomas comes in, hurts so good. White Sox up 2-1. Still on the fourth now. It's Joe Creedy up for the White Sox. Into the hole. Barrow, a full extension. Throw gets by Mike Sweeney, though. Maglio Ordonez scores. Bags, it's 3-1 Chicago. Top eight now, Angel Barrow. Off the Maso Marte, his first major league home run, and it was a good one, tied it at three. They were loaded in the ninth. Tony Payne, you wants five infielders. It's a Frank Thomas shift, the big hurt shift. Thomas facing Jason Grimsley. To right, only two outfielders out there, so Michael Tucker got to run all the way over, fighting that wind. Tony Graffinino scores. White Sox win 4-3. Mike Sweeney said, it was nice to play a baseball game in Chicago without a fan running on the field. Fans stayed in their seats this time. Over 10,000 fans, all of them in their seats for the White Sox and Royals, where Esteban Loaiza was making his third start for Chicago. He's been doing pretty well, too, although his previous two starts were both wins against the Tigers. They do both count, but it's interesting to see how Loaiza would fare against a team that generally tends to win games. Top three, Carlos Feliz. Gets him, still in the third. Desi Relaford. Loaiza allowed one earned run in six innings, tying a career high with 11 Ks. Bottom five, they are loaded up. For the White Sox, Carlos Lee. El Caballo. Grand slam to left, his first home run of the year. Sixth career grand slam. White Sox win 8-2. Esteban Loaiza now 3-0 with an ERA of 1.31. Only then Detroit's in the AL, swinging at Chicago. Bottom six, it's the White Sox, Carlos Lee, who's busting out the bat at the expense of Ricardo Rodriguez. Lee's second on the season, game tied at three. Next batter is Joe Creedy. Second pitch. 
Rodriguez with a message pitch. Either that or he's just really wild. White Sox not wild about that toss. Lee leads the stare down. Seventh inning still nodded. One out. Runners on the corners for Mags. Ordonez come back to Jose Santiago. Runners on the move. Santiago throws it away. D'Angelo Jimenez scores 4-3 Sox. Afterwards, manager Eric Wedge bemoaned the double play opportunity he lost. You see what he saw. Brandon Phillips looks like he was set to turn two. Phillips, by the way, one of those traded to Cleveland for Bartolo Colon. And there's Colon ending the threat in the eighth with one on. One of his three strikeouts. Travis Hafner gone there. Final chance for the tribe Cologne gets Omar Vizquel complete game for Cologne but not a complete game shutout 5-3 White Sox complete game of the year his second since from the outfielders for the Red Sox earlier in the highlights but when you break in on a ball and you're in the outfield there's nobody behind you except the wall and when you're running backwards there's a lot of guys running around the bases or Milton. there's a guy behind you throwing a cell phone <laughs> yeah, yeah. Milton Bradley made a made a little wrong decision right there then you've got a ground ball into the outfield. When you're charging in on the ball, you've still got to get yourself under control. You hustle to the ball, you gather yourself, and you try to make a good throw. That's a terrible throw. Of course, Anderson doesn't make a real good throw to help, him, help himself out either right after that. But if you're a club that's trying to make yourself better and trying to teach your young players, yes, you're going to make some mistakes, but these were ugly. Yeah, you want to make physical errors, not metal errors. Well, Garcia didn't learn from his first error, and he throws this one wild. <laughs> I think he's, I think he must be working on a slider right there, because both of those balls were breaking to the right. Again, same ball into the outfield for Milton Bradley. He breaks in, and I understand outfielders trying to be aggressive and trying to cut balls off, but the bottom line is you can't let the ball go over your head, and you can't make a play like that. Mistakes like that will cost you the ball game. So there it is, 12 to 3, Chicago White Sox. Sidney Ponson, I'm going to hand the White Sox at a third straight loss, but Frank Thomas is our pick to click. Hello. Third home run of the season. Sox out 1 0 early. It's 2 0, and Esteban the Wise, who's been the White Sox staff ace. Bottom of the eighth, Gary Hairston calls time at home plate. Um, Eric Cooper grants it, but the Wise is taking his own sweet time, so Hairston's going to hop out of the box again. Wanting time out and doesn't get it. Cooper's like, take the. That calls a strike. He doesn't like that. Hairston's still up two pitches later, and yeah. He goes down swinging. Could have used that strike back two batters later, and it's B.J. Suroff at the plate. And Loiza gets that a called strike as B.J., his body language says it all. Next pitch, he grounds out to first. That ends the eighth. And yes, Surhoff is going to get in his two cents worth. He gets tossed, and the O's end up losing three to one. Loiza getting the win. Twins and White Sox. Twins snap a six-game losing streak Friday. White Sox, bottom four, two on Sox. Megler Ordonez, your pick to click off Kyle Loesch, which will disappoint Stu Cliver. And Sox go up 3 1. Ordonez, two on the night, five on the season. Now we flash back to Friday, JC Romero, and he's plunking uh -oh. Ordonez. Well, earlier in the game, Mark Burley hit Doug Minkiewicz, which is Polish for whatever it was, hit me, I forget. Yeah. Back to Sarah then, Ordonez next at bat, and Loesch drills him in the back. Now that's just old school baseball justice. Don't get it, not sure I understand it, but that's what it is. And then, fans getting on Minkiewicz. John Garland drills. Well, that's not gonna make anybody happy. The benches are gonna come out. And, well, Megler says, I don't know if this is over or if it's gonna stop, but oh goody, 17 meetings left to go between these two. Sox won at 7-4. Mess has better Aprils than Esteban Loaiza. He entered the game on Sunday with the best April winning percentage among active pitchers. After that, it's not so good. So he's going to make the most of his final April start of the 03 season. Christian Guzman for the Twins. One out into the game. We got controversy. Called safe by Doug Eddings, and Jerry Manuel loses his cool uncharacteristic, uncharacteristically. Eddings gives him the gate. Look what happened. You see, he tags him, Arrow, before the bag is touched by the foot arrow but you know obviously the umpires have the benefit of the arrows top four Loiza strikes out Corey Koski and then strikes out AJ Pierzynski to close out the sixth Loiza five and oh on this A's in Chicago Billy the Kid Koch facing Ramon Hernandez first pitch hit the backstop that was a bit wild then Koch tries to calm down but only to walk Hernandez so White Sox pitching coach Don Cooper has a conference on the mound with Koch. Would it work? Well, just in case White Sox have a Damaso Marte warm up in the bullpen, just in case. Later in the ninth, Hernandez on first, two outs. 
A Rubio Durazo. That's off of Koch. Durazo one for five. He's hitting 301. So Sox manager Jerry Manuel pulls Koch from the game and puts Marte on the mound. Koch, not happy. And he shows you why. Marte facing Eric Chavez with two outs, the grounder. And that will end the game, and Marte will get the save his second. The White Sox win, stopping the A's six-game win streak. Maglia Ordonez with three hits. White Sox and A's. Wednesday, top three, two on Ted Lilly, Maglia Ordonez. Look at the Bud Light sign right there. Keep that in mind. Eric Burns leaps, but hold on. The ball comes out and back into play. Tony Graffinino comes in. The big hurt comes in. Ordoni is going to wind up at third. And the White Sox are up 3-1. What is going on out there? Well, let's take a look. Burns makes the catch, but the ball comes back out and over the fence. All right. We'll still in the third. Remember that Bud Light sign? Well, Ted Lilly, what's going on out there? The Bud Light sign, it busted. Burns and Chris Singleton are trying to fix it. The U is busted. Burns is fan club looking on. Ian Singleton think it's fixed. Uh, hold on, guys. Eric Chavez and one of the humps are trying to fix the. Try some duct tape. Ah, oh, that's not going to work. Fans trying to help out. Sign's still broken, but they play the sign with the. Bro uh, this, oh, never mind. In the fifth, Jose Valentin to shallow center. Miguel Tejada! Almost. White Sox go up 6-1. They win 8-4 as Chicago beats the A's in Oakland for the first time since August 30th of 2000. Get that sign fixed. And the day with the second most home wins in baseball. Host in Chicago and Bartolo Colon. Bottom nine leading off the inning. Oh, Edgar Martinez still getting it done. He went two for four. A home run, two RBI. And Colon trying to snap a three-game losing streak. Leaves the game. Eight plus inning, six hits, three earned. Willie Bloomquist pinch runs for Martinez. And, well, he wore his PF flyers. He steals second with Mike Cameron facing Damaso Marte. Next pitch, Cameron drives it to left. And Carlos Lee traps that ball. And, well, Bloomquist wearing the good shoes, but he forgot his thinking cap. He's caught in a rundown. That's never good. And Joe Creedy. Going to tag him out. Mariners blowing the opportunity. White Sox win it 4-3. Just their third win in their last 11 games. Roll Jay Gibbons in the first. Got his first five outs on strikeout. Sox have struggled. Lost seven of their last nine. Therefore, they're on the defensive. Low Isaac goes to third on the David Segui knock. Tony Graffanino goes to first to get Segui. 1-5-3 double play. Loiza didn't allow a runner past second base. Takes care of Gibbons again here in the sixth. Loiza, seven pitch, seven whiff. Nothing earned. Dropped his ERA to 205. Eighth inning. Carlos Lee making the blooper reel. Gibbons going to go to second to force out Frank Thomas. And that's going to bring out Jerry Manuel. Told you the Sox were on the defensive. Manuel going to leave early. But the Sox hold on to win it. one nothing. Anyway, you are so good to feel win tonight. O's and White Sox. O's hoping their three-game losing streak will come to an end. Frank Thomas of Rick Helling. His eighth homer of the season. All eight of his home runs have been solo shots. One nothing White Sox. Thomas, three for four, two RBI. Bottom third, one nothing White Sox. No out. Sandy Alomar Jr. facing Helling. It's popped up, but strong win playing tricks on Jerry Harrison Jr. That makes a great play catching the ball. It's a possible top ten. Sports Center Harrison. play. Go Great concentration there for Harrison. Bottom seven tied at one, two outs. Man on second, Alamore Jr. facing Helling. Gary Matthews Jr. can't handle it. Willie Harris coming around to score two to nothing. A two one Sox, and they're going to win it five to one. 11,886 in attendance at USO. There are many chose to attend the premiere. The Matrix reloaded. But the Orioles White Sox game had Matrix elements of its own. Bottom seven, three, two White Sox. Bases loaded for Magler Ordonez. Over the head of Melvin Mora. D'Angelo Jimenez, Jose Valentin, and Frank Thomas score triple for Ordonez. 6 2 Chicago. Ordonez, two for four, two runs, three RBI. Maglio's swing very similar to that of Morpheus. <laughs> oh, the Morpheus are, a lefty, though. Kids are getting creative in the back. Now in the eighth, Ordonez facing Jorge Julio, and he hits Ordonez. So top nine White Sox retaliate. Bartolo Colon says, forget the complete game. I got my guys back. Jerry Harrison Jr. not happy about it. Cologne eight innings pitch, five hits, two runs. Harrison had to be restrained. Cologne ejected. White Sox manual, Jerry Manuel ejected as well. The White Sox going to win it 8 2. Cologne through a complete game Tuesday night. Now you're going to get a couple of games off, courtesy of the commissioner's office. 
Cologne suspended five games for hitting Baltimore's Jerry Hairston last week after he had been warned not to. His manager, Jerry Manuel, pinched for one game as well and fined an undisclosed amount of cake. White Sox hosting the Blue Jays Wednesday night. Bottom eight, Sox down 5-4. Carlos Lee with two strikes. Clint Polite thought he got him. Angel Hernandez says no, and Polite cannot believe it. The next pitch, Lee. Oh, you Polite me. Two run homers, Sox up 6-5. Lee's eighth of the season, and you can't get it back. Top nine, Dave Berg facing Billy Koch. Tiger run on third, Berg hits it to short. Jose Valentin, the throw is high, but check out Paul Canerco. Homered, and he made that play. Sox win it. 6-5, improved to 2-20 and 20 now when trailing after seven innings. The drama that is the Phillies and Mets. Stop hitting Carlos Lee. Let's flash back. Carlos at bat for the White Sox at the bottom of the fifth. He had an interesting day on Friday. Lee, the foul ball, and it's the capital of Thailand right there. Hits him right in foul territory. Uh. Saturday, Lee gets hit in the head by a pitch. Now, you could understand if Sunday he just decided to take a day off. Instead, he takes off on one in the bottom of the fifth with one out, and the bases loaded. Grand slam, his ninth home run of the year, the seventh career grand slam for Lee. Finally, a little love for Carlos. Bottom of the 12th, two out, two on, game tied at five, not anymore. Joe Cream deep to left for the three-run home run off of Steve Spark. White Sox win 8-5. It's Creed's fourth home run of the year. Blue Jays, Jerry Manuel's team struggling. Maglio Odonez had a quote in Wednesday's Chicago Tribune saying, we stink, that's it, we stink. Top of the first, first batter, D'Angelo Jimenez for Chicago. Jimenez, contact, loops it, in for a single, but wait a minute, Jimenez, what's he doing? What is Jimenez doing? He's trying to stretch that into a double and Vernon Wells throws him out. Bad base running high on the stinkometer. Stinkometer. Mm-hmm. Maglio Odonia's at the plate. Galvin Escobar strikes him out. Odonia said they stink, and now he proves it. Frank Catalogado hits a chopper to Jose Valentin. Valentin, what about him? He can't handle it. It was a tough hop. That's a moderate on the stinkometer. Still could use some deodorant. Odonia's up with two on. Take that, stinkometer, says Maglio. How's that aroma? White Sox win 8 0. John Garland pitched eight scoreless innings for the win. Next, Blue Jays. The former Blue Jay, Esteban Luiz, looking for his eighth win in a Chicago uniform. Carlos Delgado, his 16th home run of the year. He's tied with Alfonso Soriano for the AL lead. He also has 52 RBIs, does Delgado. He's hitting 327. Top of the fourth, Valentin facing Corey Lytle. Sharp grounder. Delgado misses the ball. Maglio Adonis would score. Brian Dahlbach would move to third. We're tied at one. Delgado committed two of Toronto's season high four errors. And then Miguel Alivo, a broken bat. Delgado diving. He can't make the play. Dahlbach would score. It's 2 1 White Sox. Let's get fancy. Toronto's Howie Clark and Chicago's Joe Borchard. They look like twins, don't they? Still in the fourth. Borchard. Sack fly. Valentin looking to score on that. And Will, it's 3 1 Chicago. Mind if we get fancy again? Borchard has chipped in. Time for Clark to mirror the effort. Get it? Bottom five runners at the corners, two out. Clark the chopper up the middle. Clark hustling to beat the throw at first. Orlando Hudson would score. Toronto within one, three to two. Bottom eight. Loiza getting Clark. Looking seven and two thirds innings, five hits, four Ks. Loiza gets his eighth win, and the White Sox beat Toronto three to two. At Chavez Ravine, bottom five, Sox up 2-0. Bartolo Colon to Adrian Beltre, no chance. 5K for Colon, he went the distance, gave up one run on four hits. Top seven, same score, Frank Thomas, I rule! Off of the recently recalled Wilson Alvarez, 3-0 Sox after Thomas's 12th of the year, 388th of his career, he was 3-for-3 three three on the night. Bottom seven, Dodgers looking for any kind of offense. Jose Valentin saying, uh-uh, Fred McGriff, you get nothing. Nice play, Valentin. Joe Creedy goes deep as well. Sox win it four. Series is the 59 series. Paul Aduka, 17-game hit streak, and this is a big one. Going the other way with it, and into the corner. No, 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 pelota! It's going around, and he's racing DeLuca. He's moving like a tremendous machine inside the park. Fourth homer of the year. First career inside the park homer. Ties Boog Powell on the career list for that. 2 nothing Dodgers. First inside the park homer for L.A., of course, since 1994. Who didn't know that? Esteban La has a major league leading 1.90 ERA. Fred McGriff going away there, and then LaDuca has to go away. Two out. Core is going away. Strikes out the side. Seven innings pitch. Nine Ks. Top of five. 5-2 five, Sox. Man on. 
Men off. Frank Thomas conks that thing out. 11 game his streak for him. He was six for nine in the series. 13 dongs. White Sox win it by a count of 10 to three. Chicago Sox just finished a 13 game road trip. 1917 World Series revisited and we're going to visit not Fear Factor but the Bonds Factor. Top of the first. Barry at the plate. Would you would you rather jump through a hoop of fire or or face Barry Bonds, John Garland. Well, John Garland gets him swinging. These two never squared off. And Garland gets the best of him in the first meeting. Next time up, Barry, they walked and intentionally walked him. But what about the third time? Oh, Garland, you should have taken the box seats instead of giving that up. A huge home run is 16th, 2 nothing Giants, 475 feet, fourth longest in the 12-year history of the park, according to the Sox. You should have taken the box seats. Bottom seven. Maybe it should be the Olivo factor. He drives it deep to left center. Two-run home run. His fourth of the year. 4-2 Chicago. Maybe it should have been the Jimenez factor. He followed that with a homer, making it 5-2. Bonds up one last time. Oh, would you rather face him or face down those hot dogs? Oh, the Maso Marte. He was thinking about the dog. The 0-1 pitch right over Barry's head and... Barry's going to have to settle for one for three on Bonds Factor. He pops out to second. White Sox win 5-3. They are the big winners. Sox have won three straight. Four of five. Four and seven on the year. ERA nearly four and a half against Maglior Donez. That's not going to get it done. Way back. Got to get that pitch in there a little better. Number 12 on the year for Donez. one nothing White Sox. Bottom fourth. Carlos Lee. There's a drive. Man, if you're going to come inside, you got to bring it in there harder and heavier than that. Number 11 on the year for Lee. Good guys, as some say. Put it on the board, board here. Padres up 4-3, one off for Sean Burroughs. Carlos Lee, hustles, can't get it. Mark Loretta scores, we're tied at four. Lee was okay on the play. Oh, that, you know what? That's the way the big hurt used to hit him at Columbus High. Put that on the board. Number 16 for Frank. That's Third Frank straight Frank. day with a home run. When Billy Koch gets Ryan Klesko. His eighth save of the year. White Sox. And was, well, keep his pitch count under 80. Bottom one, he rings up Frank Thomas. Pedro struck out two in the first. Top three now. It's Manny. Two. Off Mark Burley, who had lost nine in a row coming in. A solo shot is 15th, and it's 2 nothing Boston. Bottom three, Pedro against Joe Creedy. To the pitch count at 22. Bottom four, 0 2 to Maglio Ordonez. That's a ball, Jason Baratek. Uh, no, not strike three. Oh, what? I'm sorry. That's my bad. Next pitch. Now, this is a strike. Now you can throw down there. Bill Hahn, dude, I'm so sorry. Pedro's pitch count at 38. 2 1 Red Sox. Frank Thomas up with the bases loaded in the fifth. Thomas had homered in five of his previous seven games. And the big hurt fouls off seven pitches. Pedro threw 10 pitches to Thomas, 29 in the inning. So there goes the pitch count. Thomas, what an at bat by the big hurt. Hurt so good. So Pedro now at 70 pitches, freezes him. Thomas was sitting on a fastball. 71 pitches for Pedro. He struck out six. He's done Grady Little, right? That fifth inning taxed him a lot. He, he was uh, he threw 30 pitches in that inning. After we saw the the way that inning progressed, and then we saw the the battle that he had to put up uh, with Frank Thomas, that the decision was made right then. Long tough inning. Some people call it a chasm blade. I call it a sling blade. Martinez, one run on six hits and five. Ryan Roop takes over in the sixth, and he serves one up to Joe Creedy. Creedy sixth, and that's the winner. 4-2 White Sox. Peter Gammons, though. The big story, Pedro looked healthy. It helped that he pitched to Bill Miller. Looking at strike three, he was over four. And then Doug Mirabelli struck out. He was over three. Loiza eight and in six Ks. Bottom fifth, two runners on from Miguel Olivo. He singles to left. Joe Creedy will score. Jose Valentin thinks he's scoring, but Nomar says, I don't think so. Nomar guns him out at the plate. Mia Hamm's happy. Game tied at one. Bottom six, it's Brian Daubach at the plate. And Daubach doubles to right field. On the play, D'Angelo Jimenez comes in to score. White Sox go up two to one. Top nine now. Red Sox trail three to one. Two runners on, two out. Billy Koch to trot. Advantage Koch. His ninth save. Loiza's tenth win. White Sox win it three to one. Sammy hosting on June 20th. A day that he's hit more home runs than any other eight. So you can save the cork jokes. Sean Estes, first inning is no laughing matter. If you're a Cubs fan, he walks Jose Valentin and Frank Thomas. 
Gave up an RBI single to Maglio Ordonez. Walked Joe Creedy. Then walked Aaron Rowan. That scores Thomas. And then with the bases and the count full, Estes gives up the grand slam to Miguel Olivo. The number eight hitter. Rookie catcher with his first granny in his first Cubs White Sox game. Estes gone after a 52 pitch first in his club down six. Down eight one in the second. John Garland suffering from Estes itis. Walks Mark Grudzelanek to load the sacks, but former Cubs first round draft pick strikes out Alex Gonzalez to end the threat. Top four Ordonia's at the plate with Big Hurt on first. The pop to Sammy's part of the field, and here comes the sun, and I say it's not all right if you're Sosa. The fallen star loses the ball in our nearest star. Dusty said afterwards, even x-ray glasses wouldn't have helped Sammy battle the sun. And sign, sign, everywhere's a sign. Two batters later, another bad sign for Sammy. Creedy's ball is heading his way, and oh, he's lost that glove and feeling. He trapped that, a four-run fourth and a 12-1 lead. Sosa at the stick. Wasn't much better than Sosa in the field. 0 for 4 with the walk. Sammy declined comment after the game. 12-3, White Sox. Friday, North Siders hoping to return the favor on Saturday. Top second, no score. Pitcher Mark Burley batting, facing Matt Clement with two runners on. Base hit for Burley. His first RBI of his career makes it 1-0 Sox. He came in a 1-for-11 hitter. He said, I don't know what I'm doing up there. Top third, 3-0 Sox. Joe Creedy facing Clement now. This one going off the wall. Run scores. Creedy in with a double. It's 4 0 Sox. Creedy three for five pair of doubles, pair of runs, pair of RBI. Bottom third. Creedy says it's not all about the lumber. I got some leather too. And he robs Damian Miller of a base hit. That looks like a Sports Center top 10 plays nominee to me. Bottom four. 7 0 Sox. Moises Alou facing Burley. And that one leaves the yard. A lose eighth of the year to 7-2 game. Cubs will get it to 7-3. Then in the seventh, third base coach Wendell Sendeman Kim cost them. <laughs> Ramon Martinez batting versus Burley. Damian Miller at first. Now he's a catcher, not usually known for his speed. Miller chugging around third. Watch the play at the plate. Josh Paul has the ball already. Miller's shadow is barely in the picture, and he's out by a mile. And Kim said, you know, I, I thought he could run better than that. Later in the inning, Cubs within two of 7-5. Sammy. Off Tom Gordon with a runner on, but it's not going to be a problem for Willie Harris. Sammy homeless at Wrigley since April 17th. Bottom nine, still 7-5. Sosa facing Billy Koch, man on second. Base hit. Mark Grudzelanek coming around to score. Sammy two for four with a run and an RBI, and it's a 7-6 game. Dusty Baker decides to pinch run for Sosa with Tom Goodwin. Let's see if it works out. Alou back at the plate now. White Sox pitch out, and Josh Paul nails Goodwin. Dusty says, well, I guess that didn't work. After Alou walks, Eric Carroll's already four for four on the day. You would have to be satisfied with that. Harris makes the catch. Ball game. Sox win at 7-6. They go for the sweep on Sunday. Twins. Esteban Loise are looking to become the third 11-game winner in the majors this season. And, well, that's how you get them first 10 wins. Strikes out Jock Jones swinging. Christian Guzman strikes out. Only he was not swinging. Loise cruising early. Top two. Nobody out. Brian Daubach is up. Not sure how high that roof is exactly there in Minnesota, but it's quite high and, well, the roof eats this one. Where is it? Come down. Gravity. I got it! That's a ground rule double. Freaks. Play outside. Next batter, Carlos Lee. getting a roof base hit. Roof's not a problem. AstroTurf, maybe. Dahlbach scores. White Sox lead it. One zip. So Lee Bottom three, we got a runner on first, one out. Louisa. Jock Jones again. He goes down looking. Miguel Olivo guns down Denny Hawking. Strike him out, throw him out. It all helps. Loiza strikes out five in the first three innings. Bottom eight, it's 2-1. Loiza gets Guzman to ground a second. Eight innings pitch, six hits, one run. It was unearned, so his ERA now 1.99, 2-1. Sox. 4 10 on the season, looking for his third straight win. Bottom four, 2 nothing. Chicago, Burley. All over Torrey Hunter. Career high nine Ks for Mark gone. Burley. Top of the six, same score two on for Jose Valentin. There's a base hit. It's a base hit, all right. Maglio Adonia scores easily. Brian Daubach rounds third. Valentin two for four with two RBI. Uh oh. Daubach and Valentin both score on that play. Got away from Matt Lacroix. Valentin credit with a double. It's five nothing Chicago. Bottom nine five one now. Runner on second for Doug Mankiewicz. Burley covers for the final out. Complete game effort. How rare. Pitcher goes the distance. Tenth of his career. White Sox win five to one.
Windy City matchup. Cubs and Chai Sox top four. One nothing Cubs. Sammy Sosa off of Danny Wright looking for his first win of the season. And Maglio Ordonez trying to help get it sliding grab. Top five bases loaded. Sammy, nothing. That's the right stuff. Wright gets him his second strikeout of the day. Wright had three of those. Top seven in a 1-1 game. He walks Corey Patterson with the bases or with second and third to load the bases for Sammy. You know, last year you just don't do this. But this year, it's the right decision. Tom Gordon comes in and gets him. Sosa goes down. Bottom seven, Carlos Lee off of Matt Clement and Souvenir. Two on Sox, number 12 of the season for Lee. He was two for four. Top nine, it is three to one. Gordon in some trouble, loaded the bases with one out. So here comes Billy Koch and Billy the Kid, not this time. Sammy deep enough to score the run as Tom Goodwin tags and scores. RBI number 35 for Sosa. He was 0 for 4, but still it's a 3-2 Sox lead. Next batter, Moises Alou. Runners on the corners, and that is a seeing eye single. Mark Rosalonic in. Alou ties it at 3 with RBI number 48. Koch blows his third save. Bottom nine, Jose Valentin off of Antonio Alfonseca. That ball hit hard into the ice infield. Way back, he looks up. You can't put it on the ball. Yes, in stereo, the walk-off job for Valentin. I rule. Knows it as soon as it's hits the bat. 11th home run of the year. Koch off the hook. Sox win it 4-3. Final at bat again. Jose Valentin, Friday's hero with his 11th home run of the season in the bottom of the ninth. Bottom seven. White Sox down 6-4. Valentin facing Kyle Farnsworth with two all. And Sammy Sosa says, give me that. That's a top 10 plays nominee as he robs Valentin of a home run. Bottom eight. Willie Harris facing Antonio Alfonseca. One on and one out. Over to second, but the Cubs can't turn the DP. Nice hustle by Harris to avoid the twin killing. Next batter is Aaron Rowan. And when you know it, two-run shot of Alfonseca. Rowan, second home of the season, and the game tied at six. Bottom nine, Carlos Lee facing Juan Cruz with a man on. And that's deep again. Sammy got that one as well. Magler Ordonez tags and makes it to second base. You don't see that too often, but good hustle by Ardonez to get himself in a scoring position. He's a gamer. Friday's hero, Valentin now. Another shot to win it. So we take you back to Friday afternoon. Walk off home run in the bottom of the ninth, and he knew it as soon as he hit it. So let's see what he had on Saturday. Mike Remlinger on to face him, got him swing. So no heroics for Valentin in this one. Two batters later, D'Angelo Jimenez up. Back through the middle. Up the middle. Corey Patterson's got it. Ordonez trying to score. The play not in time. And the White Sox win it again in dramatic fashion. 7-6. The final. Joe May starting for many. Bottom two, one nothing Sox. One on for Jose Valentin. Now, I should tell you, Jose Valentin was two for four in this game. And wouldn't you know, this is not one of the two because Torrey Hunter is out there. You know, he does it so often. Forget this. He also avoids Bobby Kilty. But he's human. He was over three in the night. It's a top ten nominee. But it's not the first time Hunter has done this to the White Sox. Let us go back to earlier this year when Hunter had home baggy advantage in Minnesota and Carlos Lee was denied. He does it so often, we just take it for granted. Back to Monday's game. Next after Valentin is Joe Creedy. Creedy has the smart sense to not hit it anywhere near Tory Hunter. His seventh of the year. 3 0 White Sox. Bottom three, four nothing Chicago. One on for Maglio Ordonez. His 1,000th hit of his career, a home run, 13th of the year. The Sox have won seven of ten. They're now just three and a half games out. Tuesday, Minnesota on the south side. Speaking of taking notice, hey Willie Harris, can you in that 193 batting average play another position? The ad of Robbie on his mind, brother Sandy did. Here's Harris, not letting it affect the bottom of the first, bunting for a base hit, perfection. Frank Thomas at the plate. Harris showing off the wheels. He can run. Fifth steal of the season for Harris. Very next pitch. Thomas going to drive him home and drive himself home. Get out of town on Brad Racky. 18th for the big hurt. And we're only moving to the top of the set. 3-0 Chicago. A.J. Pruszynski, I think a great defensive play is coming here. Carlos Lee giving you the A effort. Look at it again, Lee. Full extension while going down. Brzezinski thinking, I needed that hit to help my average and to help the team. The White Sox, a winner, 6-1. to one. Picking up bottom first, Kyle Loesch. It's Alomar on three straight and pitches. He goes down. Bottom third, two out, one runner on for Frank Thomas. 
No need to chase it. It's going. Thomas is 19th of the year. Take another look at it. Torrey Hunter almost came up with another unbelievable catch. Wow. Not quite tall enough. Top nine, runner on first, one out, Corey Koski. Over to Alomar, who's still got the glove. Jose Valentin finishing up the double play. That's a Sports Center top 10 plays nominee. They went to extras, bottom 10, one out, bases loaded for Magler Ordonez. Christian Guzman, give me some glove. 6-4-3 DP, twins out of the inning. Bottom 11, two out, Sox down 6-5. Pinch hitter Paul Konerko batting .079 over the last 27 games. Got your .079 batting average right here. His fourth of the year, game tied at six. Bottom 12, here's Robbie. Down the line in left field, could he be a hero? No, it won't. He would eventually walk. Two batters later, Thomas up again, and the big hurt is hurting him. It's time to bounce. His second home run of the game. Sox win at 8 6 in 12 innings, and everybody's happy on the south side tonight. Carlos Lee will pop up. Stanford says, I got it. Teammate Casey Blake undercuts him. Stanford holds on. Both of them fine. This game just filled with shaky defense. Bottom four, Roberto Alomar, whoops, flips the pass, Tony Graffinino. On top of the eight, Alomar with a hit, Zach Sorensen can't get it. Bottom eight, Alomar misses the ball and the tag. Milton Bradley will move his marker to home plate, and it's 4-2 Indians. Top nine, now two outs, two on for Alomar, facing Danny Baez. To the pitch, swung on a weak chopper, hit high in the air to the mound, club by Baez, throw to first, throws it down the right field line. The White Sox tie it. Unbelievable. Fourth error Alomar is involved in. Game tied at four. Top ten, runners on the corners. Paul Konerko, .93 batting average in his last 31 games, facing Terry Mulholland. I think you know what's coming. Swing and a drive. Deep Konerko says, I got your .93 batting average right here. Three run shot. He was two for five, three RBI. And the White Sox take it seven to four. Game, six and two thirds. But again, this is the Tigers. 745 Central Cordeo against Paul Konerko. Breaks up the no-no. So the no-no, no mole. But you still have the shutout going, 2-0. So 746, next batter, Jose Valentin, single in the left center. Back-to-back -back hits for the White Sox. 749 Central, next batter, Joe Creedy with two men on. He's greedy here. Bloops, an RBI single, breaking up Cornejo's shutout. Sox trail 2-1. to one. Alan Trammell, looks like settle down. Let's get a win, Nate. You're done. Cornejo, 6 and 2 thirds, 3 hit. Detroit still up 2 1. 755. Tony Graffinino with two men on treats Jamie Walker like Jimmy Walker. Dynamite. Three run homer. Southsiders strung together seven straight hits. In 10 minutes, Cornejo goes from a no hitter to getting his eighth loss of the straight on point against Dimitri Young. Got him to chase a nasty bender for a strikeout. Next batter, Kevin Witt. Don't get it twisted, kid. Loisen will go seven innings, allowed only one run, struck out seven. Then, Frank Thomas. Booyah! In a six for 43 slump, slump this. 21st home run of the year, 397 for his career. Bottom three, Thomas. Big hurt, still eating. Holla to play it. Second of the game, 22nd career multi homer game. Chicago wins 10 1. Loiza gets his 12th win, a career best. In the last 30 years. Top first, Frank Thomas does not hit career home run number 400. He strikes out. Top five, Carlos Lee does hit his 17th of the year. Way deep. Sox go up 4 3. Halliday leaves, six innings pitch, seven hits, four, and runs three strikeouts. So his teammate's going to have to pick him up, and Vernon Wells, he's lifting. A launch off Mark Burley, deep to center field. Wells, 26th home run of the year. Jays lead it 5-4. Top nine, Sox trailing 6-4. Juan Acevedo would leave after loading the bases. Dan Reichert's in. Megley Ordonez. Uh-oh. Down the left field line. We got a tie ball game. Robbie Alomar scores. Carlos Lee chugs home. 6-6. Next batter, Reichert. Whoa, trying to intentionally walk Carl Everett. And he does with gusto. Bases are full. Luckily, no one advanced beyond that point. Next batter, Paul Konerko. I think that was unintentional. He plucked him. Takes one for the team for the RBI. Go ahead, 7-6. Now bottom nine, one out, two on. Frank Catlin out of the pinch hitter. No, sir. 4-6-3, game ending, double play. White Sox escape Canada 
with a 7-6 victory. 1-8 and eight with an 8-41 career ERA against the Sox. Top one, Frank Thomas. I'm not crazy. I'm just a little unwell. He's staring. And then same difference yeah. next time up. Two earned at seven innings for Escobar. And then, well, it's raining. We've got a rain delay at Sky Dome. They have a retractable roof. Apparently, they weren't prepared for this sort of thing. What, no Doppler 3000 in Canada, I guess. Top 13 in a 2-2 game. The Big Hurt makes big amends, scoring Carlos Lee to make it 3-2 Sox. Bottom of the inning, it's 4-2 Vernon Wells, and all's Wells that ends Wells for Vern. 27th of the year is only hitting five at bats. It is suddenly a 4-3 contest. Next batter, Carlos Delgado, and Rick White gets him. The shift on, and it works. 4-3 Sox, their seventh consecutive victory. Here, Frank Thomas looking for career jack number 400, facing Jorge Sosa, liftoff. Left field, and we've got history. It's it's actually just a long fly ball. Oh, what a buzz kill. Carl Crawford makes the catch, so we go to the bottom of the fifth. It is six-nothing Sox after a Carlos Lee home run, and a big hurt. You're not gonna fool me again. I know that's not going out. All right, all right, it's going out. There it is, number 400 career, 36th man to reach that plateau. Seven nothing Sox, 24 on the season for Thomas. Same inning, Carl Everett slices one gap word. Now, this is gonna be a run of the mill, ground rule double. Run of the mill until Rocco Baldelli gets a shower. Nothing like a beer shower when you're down seven nothing. Fortunately, it was light beer, so it didn't hurt. Fans would get ejected, Sox would win the game. Cologne, four in a lifetime against the D-Rays in eight career starts. Top one, Cologne rocks Aubrey Huff to sleep. His career ERA against the D-Rays, 2.86. Javier Valentin went down. Then Julio Lugo just hanging out in the block, minding his own business. Business for Cologne, 7 Ks and 8 innings. Bottom 5. Big tall brother 6-2 want to hit you. Frank Thomas, big hurt. 25th homer of the year, 401 for his career, two hits shy of 2,000 soccer. Central lead, George Brett watching his deeds to open a big three-game series. Jose Valentin saying, hey, this isn't your regular series. This is about sending a message. This is the team we want to be. Top four, Maglia Ordonez off Daryl May's foot. First baseman, Ken Harvey. No. Can't quite get Ordonez. Let's look again. It goes directly off May's foot, right to Harvey. Dives head first. A nice try here, but he can't quite get Ordonez. So later in the fourth, it's Paul Konerka. Off May. Two-run shot is eighth. May allowed seven runs on ten hits and six and a third. Next guy, Joe Creedy, also homered. And more White Sox long balls. Top five, Mags. Two-run shot. Ordonez is 20th, and it's 5-2 White Sox. Meanwhile, Mark Burley, we know what, you know, he's streaky. We know that about him. In his last eight starts, 6-0, 2.73, but in his previous 11 starts, he was 0-9, 6.86. I'm making this a top-10 nominee. I'm not even asking anybody. Top, bottom six, Ken Harvey is second. Robbie Alomar and Tony Graffanino turn two. Bottom eight, Angel Baroa. Off Rick White, and uh oh, here comes KC. Three run shot as Burrow is 14th, and the Royals have oh. cut it to 9 6. Boink, bottom nine. Aaron Guile. Flash Gordon to Graffinino, and the White Sox win 9 6. They cut the Royals' lead in the AL Central to three, and as Valentin hoped, the White Sox send a message. Burley wins his seventh straight. Ronaldo's Hernandez, advantage Valentin, his 15th. It's 2-1 after the solo job. And if some is good, more is better. Third inning, Valentin, Hernandez, advantage Valentin, second of the game, 16th of the year, second of the highlight, 6-4 <laughs> Chicago. Oh, Valentin suffered a bad case of bat scratch fever. We go to the fifth. That ball hit deep, get up, stretch, stretch. You can put it on the board, yes! Three in a row for Jose Valentin. Oh, give me a triple shot of that juice. That's top <laughs> 10 play nominee. First player to hit three since the big hurt in 96 at Boston. How about four? Well, Sean Lowe in for Hernandez, who lasted just two and two thirds, his shortest outing of the season. Four straight balls to Valentin. We go to the seventh. Paul Canerco, two RBI already in this ball game. Bases loaded, homer Tuesday. Up low. Deep to left center, Carlos Beltran. Oh, that's a top 10 nominee for the grab right there. Sean Lowe says, oh, I'm out of the inning. Hey, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sean, guess what, come back. Come back, Sean, we got bad news for you. Carlos didn't catch it. What? Oh. Looks like he had it, looked like he lived on Glove Street, then he moved.
Canerco's ninth home run of the year. It's 14-4. Valentin, full count. Does he have a four spot in him? No, he's got ball four. Low walks him again. Ninth inning. Valentin up again looking for that fourth homer. Valentin going to strike out swinging, but the ball gets away from Mike DeFelice. Valentine reaches for the sixth time in the game, drives in a career-high six runs. White Sox win 15-4. They set season highs for runs, hits, and homers. His job was once in serious jeopardy. Not anymore. Jerry Manuel. The Sox started May four and a half out of first, fell to as many as eight and a half out. But their recent push has them two back for the first time since early April, and they're coming on strong. Top of the first, no score on Thursday. Carlos Lee against Kyle Snyder. Lee. That was his first home run of this game. He'd add another one in the third. 1-0 Chicago at that time. It was 3-2 Chicago in the fifth. Runner on third. Carlos Beltran facing Esteban Loaiza. Just an infield hit right front of the plate. Beltran is thrown out at first. Desi Relaford would score. We're tied at three. Top of the six. Same score runner on first. Paul Canerco. That's a money hit. Deep and out. Number 10 for Canerco. 13 homers in the series for the White Sox. 51 in July. Bottom six. Loaiza facing Michael Tucker. That's the third time Tucker has struck out. Royals just six and eight since the break. Tucker comes through there with an RBI infield hit. That scores Carlos Fables. We're tied. We're on to extras. Runners on first and second. When your pinch hitter, Sandy Alomar, just slices one, it drops for an RBI double. That scores two. The White Sox go on to win. They've won 12 of their last 13, and they're just a game back of the Royals. Start August. That's the question. Tom first. Carl up two on. Uh, that's not a good start. Everett's 20th. Three, nothing White Sox. Paul Canerco. That's not a good start. His 11th of the year, fourth consecutive game with a home run back to back for Chicago. Four nothing White Sox. Garcia, one and two thirds. He's out of there. Now that's saying ooh, that's saying boo. Top four, Roberto Alomar, up the middle. Brett, boom. Yep. Nice. Bottom six. Hello, hello. He gets it done. So did the White Sox. 12-1, your final. They're trying to snap the Sox three-game skid. Jerry Manuel with confidence in his starter. Looking to win hit. So with Esty going and Bartolo going the next two two starts, we should we should take the next two ball games. That's confidence. Bottom two. Sox down one zip. Miguel Olivo rips Kyle Snyder to center. That brings in a run. Jose Valentin also trying to come home. Carlos Beltran says, wait, wait, too late. Game tied at one. Snyder lasted just two innings before leaving with shoulder tightness. Still, bottom second, Sox up 3-1. Frank Thomas, the big hurt, the big hurt. His 27th of the season, second homer in as many days. The Sox set a franchise record, homering in 17 straight home games. Bottom third, Paul Canerco, deep to center. Carlos Beltran, don't do it. That's a top 10 nominee. Beltran making up for a one for five game. Top nine, Royals down 5-4. Jose Lima trying to work some magic, but Raul Ibanez flies out. Ball game. Manuel, confident then, confident now. Any guarantees for tomorrow? <laughs> no guarantees for tomorrow, man. You can start something, don't you? White Sox trail KC by two in the AL Central. Luiza leads the AL with a 2.7 ERA. He has 14 wins this season. The, NL the same day that the Royals were back at U.S. Cellular Field, Bartolo Colon looking for his fourth straight win. Top one, he gets Carlos Beltran. Tony Payne said Colon was untouchable for seven innings. Bottom three, Robbie Alomar, his first American League home run this season. White Sox up 1-0. Colon in trouble in the eighth with a 3-0 lead, but he gets on Hel Barrow at a ground into the 6-4-3. Colon allowed three hits in eight shutout innings. Jeff Brantley, your thoughts. The reason he was brought here was to pitch like he did today. Eight innings, shutout baseball. This guy in August and September, he is going to be the one pitcher that the Chicago White Sox count on to take them to the promised land, the playoffs in October. Cologne struck out seven in the game. Royals down 4 nothing in the ninth. Carlos Beltran taking flash. Gordon Yard is 17th, so here comes KC back within one. Raising that closer issue with the White Sox again. They may still need one. Two outs, Damaso Marte rings up Desi Relaford for his ninth save. And Chicago cuts KC's AL Central lead to just one game. To being in first place for the first time since May of last year, Jose Valentin knows. Look at his quote. 
If we continue to swing like this, I think we'll take over the division. The White Sox had homered in a team record 18 straight home games. About a four, A's up 2-1, that streak lives. Maglio Ordonez off Mark Mulder, his 100th career homer at U.S. Cellular Field, the 171st in his career, tied with Robin Ventura for fourth in team history. Key play replay, Eric Burns, almost real close. Ordonez almost had it. Ordonez three for four. Top seven, 3-2 White Sox, Ramon Hernandez against Mark Burns. Fly ball to deep center. It might go. Call ever. If nobody's with it, boy, go up and get it. Great catch. Call ever. Also two for two at the plate. Hernandez can thank Everett for not having a hit. He was 0 for 3. Burley like, woo boy. Top nine. Burley gets Eric Chavez to ground out. He retired 17 of the last 19 batters to get his 11th career complete game. White Sox win. 3-2. Your final. Pitching against for Chicago until Friday on Dan Patrick's show. Esteban has to be. Who's going to be the pitcher for the White Sox? Pitching? Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> you know, I don't even know. <laughs> you have no idea what's going on, do you? Uh, you know, honestly, not much of an idea. <laughs> You're going to get Esteban Loaiza. He's 14 and 5. There's an assist from Rob Dibble. Bottom of the fifth, one nothing. Chicago make it 2 nothing. Frank Thomas, RBI double to left. Carlos Lee would come around to score. Top of the seventh, it's 3 nothing. Chicago. Yerubio Durazo, fly ball, shallow left. Lee's going to get there, almost goes too far, nearly runs by it, slips and falls. Great concentration to make what turns out to be a somewhat embarrassing catch. Loiza having a great day on the mound. Terrence Long, Adam Melhews, Billy McMillan, Eric Chavez. Loiza, eight innings, one earned run, one walk, and six strikeouts. Bottom of the eighth, Jose Guillen and Miguel Tejada collide going for the ball. Guillen had the win knocked out of him but stayed in the game. The non-roster spring training invitee gets his 15th win. Phil Cotts, 23-year-old lefty, making his Major League debut Tuesday. Well, back on Monday, Sox manager Jerry Manuel said this about Cotts in the minors. I don't remember anything about him. That's sad, isn't it? He's throwing for me tomorrow, and I have no idea. All right, let us refresh your memory. Cotts having some control issues. Yeah, he walked Adam Kennedy, lead off the inning, and then Garrett Anderson takes a walk, and then Cotts walks Tim Salmon, a force in a run. Angels within a run, 3-2. to two. Jerry Manuel has seen an Enough, removes Cots after two and a third, two hits, six walks, two earned runs. Dan Wright, who was originally scheduled to start, relieves Cots and gets Scott Spezio to pop to short. We have two out, but the bases are still loaded. Next batter, Benji Molina, gets under it, pops it up. Wright successful in getting out of the jam. The Sox up one. Top of the fourth, one on, one out for Carlos Lee. Against Ramon Ortiz, Lee drives one. That's going in the gap. Roberto Alomar will score on that. Sox are up 4-2, and then later in the inning, the always lethal Maglia Ordonez. Ordonez looking to do something with something, and he does that. He really puts it on the ground and goes up the middle. That's a base hit. Carlos Lee would score. The Chicago White Sox continue to make things interesting in the Central. 10 4 is hit high and deep to right field. Kapler going back, looking up. It's gone. Second career home run for Valentin on Mike Timlin, and this one ties the score at four. Then 0 for 24 after making outs in his first two at-bats, has now had a single, and now the home run. 2-1. In the air to right field. Back goes Kapler. He's at the track front of the wall, and he will make the catch to end the ball game. Joe Creedy gives it a ride to deep right, but Kapler's back there, and he makes the catch, and the Red Sox win it 5-4. to four. Way back. You can put it on the ball. Yes! yes. Right now, it'll be time to take a look at our Miller Genuine Draft play of the game. Joe Creedy, a double out in the left center field gap. 
Driving in a couple of big runs. That's Joe Creedy coming through with a big series. That's our Miller Genuine Draft play of the game. And tonight was our final White Sox telecast of the season right here with WGN-TV. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the spring.